Over a decade ago, most people imagined space shuttles when they thought of spaceflight symbols. On July 21st, 2011, the final shutdown mission touched down at the legendary Space Coast facility in Florida. As Atlantis landed for the last time, this chapter also marked the conclusion of NASA's 30-year space shuttle program. Since then, the historic runway at Kennedy Space Center has largely remained quiet for far too long, as humans lost the ability to return from space with low runway G landings. But that's about to change, because Dream Chaser Tenacity is almost ready to launch. Recognized as a space plane, Dream Chaser will be the second vehicle following the space shuttle capable of runway landings, even surpassing the shuttle in its autonomous control capabilities at every phase of the journey. Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Looking like a small space shuttle, Dream Chaser lost out to SpaceX and Boeing for NASA's commercial crew program, but won a spot in the second round of commercial cargo missions to deliver supplies to the International Space Station. Dream Chaser is a lifting body design based on work NASA did decades ago for a space plane called HL-20 that was to deliver passengers and cargo to an Earth-orbiting space station. Sierra Space adopted the design to service the International Space Station, and it won the NASA contract to deliver cargo. Designed to navigate the celestial pathways with wings, much like the iconic space shuttle of yesteryears, the Tenacity promises to restore the spectacle of a winged rocket launching into the sky and gracefully descending back to Earth. As Dream Chaser can't fly to space on its own, a big rocket, namely ULA's Vulcan Centaur, is required to deliver the craft to low Earth orbit. Sierra Space and its partner United Launch Alliance, or ULA, have been working tirelessly to usher in a new era of space travel with their combined efforts focused on the imminent launch of the Dream Chaser Tenacity. After years of research and development, they finally achieved significant progress that demonstrates a clear transition from concept to reality. As the space plane evolves from its early skeletal form to a fully operational and technologically advanced vehicle adorned with thermal tiles, the forthcoming mission promises to put every component to the test. Sierra Space Corporation has also been consistently updating the progress of the spacecraft on its social media platforms. Sierra Space recently shared the latest image of the Dream Chaser, presenting a stunning angle. The rudder was the first flight control surface to be installed on Dream Chaser and consists of almost 100% titanium. The development of an effective set of flight control surfaces was a critical advance in the development of aircraft. It'll aid in maintaining stability and gravitational balance during the spacecraft's ascents into higher altitudes. Furthermore, it's crafted from nearly 100% titanium material, which offers durability, corrosion resistance, and lightness. This attribute contributes to reducing unnecessary weight, subsequently cutting down on fuel consumption and enhancing cost efficiency. Another update to the Dream Chaser is the inside of its compartment. The internal structure of Dream Chaser had a visible gold composite of aluminum foil and other materials. This is used as a leakage liner to prevent oxygen from leaking out of the vehicle and maintain optimal pressure in the cabin. In addition, in July, Sierra Space hosted comprehensive training with NASA's SpaceX Crew-8 astronauts to learn the inner workings of Dream Chaser. Three astronauts, Mike Barrett, Matt Dominic, and Jeanette Epps, are members of the upcoming NASA SpaceX Crew-8 mission to the ISS, which is currently slated to launch no earlier than February of next year. During their planned six-month stay, Dream Chaser is scheduled to make its maiden voyage to deliver cargo to the ISS as part of NASA's Commercial Resupply Service's CRS-2 contract. We're pleased to train the crew that will be on board the International Space Station for Dream Chaser's first cargo resupply mission, said Sierra Space CEO Tom Weiss. These astronauts underwent an extensive training curriculum to prepare them for how to interact with our space plane when it bursts with the ISS. We are honored to join NASA's cargo resupply team. Company specialists conducted the eight-hour training session, which took place at Sierra Space's Louisville, Colorado facility. The first two parts were classroom training, followed by two parts working inside a full-size mock-up of Dream Chaser. To be honest, true to its namesake tenacity, 
that Dream Chaser has persevered to achieve what Jeanette Cavandi, president of Sierra Space, declared back in May. We should be ready to go by the end of this year. This statement has marked Tenacity's readiness for its first journey, symbolizing the resurgence of space shuttle technology. It's a culmination of perfecting Dream Chaser's trials, but let's not forget that Dream Chaser can't independently ascend to orbit. It must rely on ULA's Vulcan rocket for a part of the journey. That's why the larger issue regarding Dream Chaser's mission execution speed pertains to its downstream effects on the highly anticipated Vulcan rocket launch manifest. United Launch Alliance is set to unveil ULA's Vulcan Centaur within the December timeframe. An integration in December or January would support a launch in the early months of 2024. At this juncture, a primary concern has shifted from the durability test article to the inaugural mission of the Vulcan rocket. Vulcan's first mission involves carrying payloads from various companies, excluding Sierra Space. This launch is the second where durability will be integrated. However, the delay of Vulcan's first flight has raised apprehensions about the punctuality of the second launch. ULA recently uncovered a weakness in the upper stage forward dome of Vulcan, necessitating the nearly flight-ready rocket's return to the factory for enhancements. Despite this setback, the company remains confident in the rocket's successful liftoff this year. When questioned about Vulcan's delays, Tom, CEO of Sierra Space, said that they're closely monitoring Vulcan, emphasizing the importance of its first flight before transitioning to the second. This quote underscored Sierra Space's reservations regarding Vulcan's timeline. On a positive note, ULA's CEO Tori Bruno recently expressed optimism that the second Vulcan could be ready for launch by early next year. Ultimately, the second Dream Chaser launch heavily depends on the outcome of its maiden flight. With the hopes for a smooth maiden flight and subsequent pre-launch testing, the second Vulcan's projected to launch around February of the following year. This second launch, featuring the highest durability, will mark the first of at least seven missions Sierra Space will execute for NASA to facilitate cargo transport to and from the International Space Station. But that's just the beginning of what Dream Chaser can achieve. In itself, it holds numerous advantages for further development in space. Although Dream Chaser is only a quarter the length of the space shuttle, it has greater carrying capacity than the other spacecraft being used in NASA's commercial resupply program. Equipped with an expendable cargo module, it can carry six tons into low Earth orbit, enough to supply astronauts on the ISS for half a year. Almost all of those six tons are carried under pressurized conditions. It can also bring back two tons of cargo, including fragile science experiments, thanks to its modest gravity loading on re-entry and landing. There's space on board for up to seven astronauts. The versatility is one of the other outstanding features of Dream Chaser. All of the aforementioned features contribute to making Dream Chaser by far the most versatile spacecraft that NASA is currently funding. Not only can it carry cargo and or crew, but it can also accomplish an array of missions ranging from microgravity experiments to remote sensing to servicing deployed satellites. It potentially can be used for both civil and military missions, and with the addition of radiation hardening, can be utilized in higher orbits. It can also be lofted into orbit on a variety of launch vehicles, including human-rated rockets if a decision is made to use it for astronaut transportation. Sierra Space executives are careful not to get ahead of themselves when discussing all the ways Dream Chaser might one day be used. However, the company's website describes Dream Chaser's capabilities in terms that suggest carrying cargo to the space station could merely be the first chapter in the Dream Chaser narrative. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.